Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Padre Altantaş from Tulane University Biodiversity Research Institute. Uh, sorry. And today I'm going to talk about the application of AI health classification of the fish images uh, by means of the IDIC bio data set, IDIC bio example. So as an institution, we are the data provider for the image genomics projects, which is focused on the uh, audio um, computer vision and data extraction, extraction from these uh, images and videos, etc. Uh, our main aim is, our main role is uh, providing the fish images as an example. So at first, uh, to provide these fish images, we have to download these images from the different repositories like IDICBio, uh, GBIF, and Gillian or some other museums. Uh, after downloading these images, we provide them to the machine learning guys. So when they check the files, they see that the images we provided are not included fish always. There are different images in this uh, repositories, but they are tagged as fish when we download it. So that's the main problem because we are downloading, we are providing the images, but they are not the images that we want. To get rid of this problem, uh, we try to uh, create a model which identifies the images and classifies this, these images in different classes. So these classes are complete fish images, X-ray images, CT scan images, and our clear stained uh, images, labels, notes, partial fish, or photographs, fossils, etc. We have 10 uh, classes we defined. So other uh, things, for example, if uh, image has no fish, we are not interested in with them. We are just interested in those kind of things, especially for the complete images, complete fish images. Those are our uh, classes that we are going to use. For this purpose, uh, by hiring the contractors, we or they uh, tagged almost uh, 90,000 images by their uh, classes. So we have 9,000 images, but only 45,000 of these are usable for us. Other 45,000 is that we are not interested in. Uh, for this purpose, we trained a model for every class. So it's a binary classification thing. So we create a model for the X-ray images. So if you apply the model, you, it can say this is X-ray image or non-X-ray image. So we have 10 models for 10 classes in hand. We use Python. PyTorch and uh, CV2 for image processing. And basically, we use the faster RCNN pre-trained model to get the things faster because we need a faster uh, solution for that. Uh, for training sets, we use 150 to 3,000 images because every classes, tag, tag classes have different uh, number of samples. For example, complete fish images has a lot of samples. But for the skeleton or for the fossils, we have less number of images tagged. So we uh, choose the proper number for each classes for training. So the training set and validating set and the test set is in these percentages. So what we basically do is after we training the model for every single classes. We applied this model for all the images we have. In this table uh, on the upper side, for example, we have an uh, image tagged, at, uh, tagged as photographs. And we applied the X-ray model for this image set. And we get if there's an X-ray image there or if our model can find the uh, X-ray image from the photograph images. 
that are the image text, text as, as photographs. And at first table, you can see the real class is, uh, sorry, in the first one, we applied the photograph model on the X-ray images, sorry. And you can see the real class is X-ray and it's identified as non-photograph at this score. So it's not a photograph, it's an X-ray. So on, on the other side, other uh, table, the first two is X-ray, but identified as non-X-ray when we apply the X-ray model on it. So sometimes, or uh, not all the X-ray images or the images tagged as X-ray is not identified as X-ray image by our model. So that was another problem with the image uh, data set or image tagging. Because this handmade tagging is not always true. Or sometimes people doesn't take care of the uh, image and just click uh, to fill the time or something. And I will give the uh, results of this work actually here. At the bottom, you, you can see the 10 different models. And at the top, you can see the tag label nodes. That means we have a image set which is tagged as label nodes by the, by manually. And we applied our models on this image sets 10 times, 10 models. We applied every model uh, to this image set. And as you can see, uh, the label nodes model finds too many label nodes in it. And also, drawing fonts in that uh, label nodes image set. So maybe the labels are written by hand and drawings are, are also the drawings, pen drawings. Maybe our model is confusing or confusing the determine which is a label or which is uh, which is the writing or which is a drawing. So in the other one, uh, for the photograph image, tagged as photograph image data set, we applied all of these models. And as you can see, okay, photograph model found the highest number of the images as a photograph. Also, also there is a partial fish is a, in the higher level. Maybe there is, the photograph means uh, the picture of the fish uh, outside of the laboratory, maybe in the natural environment. Maybe someone is holding the fish and the part of the fish is closed and it's identified as a partial fish. And we have similar uh, results like this. The most interesting one is the X-ray and the CT scan images are very confusing. We applied the X-ray model to the uh, CT scan image. It's found, it found too many X-ray images in it. And we applied the CT scan model on X-ray images. It found CT scan images on it, more than X-ray images. But they are normally very confusing. CT scans are more detailed X-ray images, actually. So it's normal. So we have similar things like that. But for a solution, we change our path. So we start to do object detection. It's more accurate. It's more trustable. When you detect, detect an object, a fish object on the picture, and when you detect an label on the picture, or scale bar, if one picture has fish image label and a scale bar, it's probably a complete fish image, which taken in the laboratory or in by the collection manager. And also for our projects, we need the bounding box fish images. So if we get this object detection, we also get the bounding box image from that. Also, there's a 
multi-object problem. Some of the pictures have multiple objects in it, multiple fish objects. So by object detection method, we can also uh, extract the multiple images or also multiple uh, bounding box fish images or multiple uh, labels from it. So object detection method is more useful for filtering the uh, images from the image repositories. And we will have the metadata, metadata for these pictures also, images, if it's a complete fish or uh, bounding box coordinates, et cetera. Maybe the repository providers like IDIC Bio can use this metadata in their system if we give them as a feedback. So that's our work. Uh, actually, we did a filtering. We tried to filter the unknown or wrongly tagged images from the IDIC Bio. This is just a small example. So, uh, but this object detection method will be applied to the wider, uh, wider number of the image. In the fish air, for example, we have a fish air system. It's presented in the, this morning. Uh, we have almost 400,000 image there. So we can apply on it and we can uh, check what kind of images uh, in there, also in that data set. Okay, this is our team, team from Tubri, and we are the part of the image genomics project and also completed biological, uh, biology guided neural network project, which is the starting of the, all the things. And if you have any questions, uh, I will be happy to try to answer. Thank you. Thank you very much for that talk. Thank you. Um, are there questions in the room? Okay, maybe we don't have time and we should. Okay. Yeah. Um, any questions? Then we will um, move on to the next speaker, um, and that is Colin Lynn. Yep. Yay! I was hoping for another in-person one. <laughs> <laughs>